Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and a Merry Christmas Eve to those who celebrate it. Say Merry Christmas Eve, Christmas Fox. So today's video is just going to be a quick update on something that should be happening today if everything goes well. I feel like I'm in my update era right now where like every other video is an update, but I do promise to keep tabs on these things. So I guess I'm really just doing it to myself. But anyway, about a year ago, I did a video on the Parker Solar Probe. It's a really cool NASA probe that launched in 2018 with a mission to touch the sun, or basically be the first spacecraft to fly through the sun's corona. According to NASA, the Parker Solar Probe will revolutionize our understanding of the sun. The spacecraft is gradually orbiting closer to the sun's surface than any before it. Flying into the outermost part of the sun's atmosphere, the corona, for the first time, Parker Solar probe is collecting measurements and images to expand our knowledge of the origin and evolution of solar wind. It will also make critical contributions to forecasting changes in the space environment that affect life and technology on Earth, which I have covered a few times on this channel. Hello, solar tsunami. And the other cool thing about the Parker Solar Probe is that it is the fastest moving object that humans have ever built. At its maximum speed, aided by the the gravitational pull of the sun, the probe reaches a velocity of 430,000 miles per hour, or more than one-sixth of 1% 1 the speed of light. Basically, it's the kind of speed that would get you from New York to Tokyo in less than a minute. It's pretty fast. So basically, for the last six years, Parker has been zipping through outer space, flying by the sun a bunch of times. However, on Christmas Eve 2024, as of this recording, Parker will make its closest approach to the sun. It will come within 3.8 million miles of the solar surface, flying into the solar atmosphere for the first time. And it is going to get hot. Scientists estimate that the probe's heat shield will endure temperatures in excess of 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Dr. Nicola Fox, Associate Administrator of NASA's Science Mission Directorate and former project scientist for the Parker Solar Probe, reiterated the goal of wanting to understand the origins of the solar wind. This is the stream of charged particles that emanate from the sun's outermost layer, the corona. Fox explained that scientists have been wondering about solar wind for more than half a century. She said, quite simply, we want to find the birthplace of the solar wind. Now, solar wind was only a theory until the Mariner 2 mission in 1962 actually started measuring it. As the scientific community began to embrace the concept of solar wind, they wanted to know more about it. Although the solar wind is invisible to the naked eye, when you see an aurora on Earth, that's the solar wind interacting with Earth's magnetosphere in a particularly violent way. And so the idea of building a spaceship to visit solar wind at its doorstep was an obvious one. But actually building a spacecraft to go to the sun Different story, super expensive, really difficult, which might seem counterintuitive, right? Because it's this massive object in the sky with a huge gravitational field. Things should want to go there because of this attraction. You should be able to launch any old thing into the sky and it will go towards the sun. But the problem is you don't want your spacecraft to actually fly into the sun or be going so fast that it passes the sun and just keeps moving. You want this sweet spot of a pretty powerful rocket that can just touch the sun at just the right orbit, but still collect and return data to Earth. And then there's this whole building a sophisticated spacecraft that can survive flying into the atmosphere of a star. It's super hot, there's radiation and plasma for days. But in order to observe the origin of the solar wind, you've got to get inside the corona. Dr. Fox explained that it's like trying to understand a forest by looking in from the outside. One actually needs to go into the forest and find a clearing. However, in this metaphor, we can't really stay in the forest for very long because the forest is 
on fire. And the other aspect of this is not only just surviving the heat, but also to have the ability to go back and forth between the heat and the coldness of space every time it completes one of these orbits. The spacecraft is going from this incredibly hot environment to an incredibly cold one and back and forth multiple times. Dr. Fox said, if you think about heating and cooling any kind of material, they may go brittle and eventually crumble, or they may go like elastic with this continual change of property. And obviously with a spacecraft like this, you can't have it making a major property change. You need something that's lightweight, but you also need something that's very durable. And that goes for the science instruments as well that are aboard the probe. As the probe flies into the sun, there's an instrument known as a Faraday cup that hangs out to measure ion and electron fluxes from the solar wind. Unique technologies were needed to even make this thing viable. For example, the the cup itself is made from sheets of titanium, zirconium, and molybdenum with a melting point of about 4,260 degrees Fahrenheit. And then for the electronic wiring, the team at John Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory and NASA grew sapphire crystal tubes to suspend the wiring and made the wires from niobium, as obviously standard electronic wiring cables would just melt. So it took a lot of time, money, and technological breakthroughs of exotic materials to even create a spacecraft capable of touching the sun. And on Christmas Eve, we are finally going to see the Parker Solar Probe do just that. So I will keep an eye on the story and let you guys know if Parker's solar journey was a success or not. But just think, while you're trying to stay warm in a cold environment, maybe even a snowy environment this Christmas Eve, at the same time, there is a 1,500 pound probe, 1,500 pound probe, double P's every time, hurtling through the sun's corona, collecting data maybe right now. And then it's gonna pop out on the other side, head back out into the vastness of space, and then do the whole thing all over again in about three months time. Parker is currently planned to operate through the summer of 2025, where it will have its 24th and final perihelion. But I did see some talk of them possibly extending Parker's mission, as NASA is so fond of doing these days. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I mean, we made a probe that can fly into the corona of the sun. Like, very cool, right? But I kind of feel bad, because I know that this really means that somebody is working on Christmas Eve, probably just staring at a monitor, being like, do we still have a probe? Do we still have a probe? Do we still have a probe? Do we still, we still have a probe? At least that's my Christmas wish. <laughs> Good luck, Parker. Okay, that's it for now. Merry Christmas and happy holidays to all of you. I hope all of you get to spend time with those you hold dear. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video.